So in this little experiment that I've uh, put together for you today is I want to find out how water will attenuate a microwave signal. Now we know in its liquid form it seriously will attenuate a microwave signal which is why microwave signals don't propagate well when it's raining quite heavily. But uh, how does water affect a microwave signal in its uh, three different states? So it can be a solid, a liquid and a uh, vapour or gas. So how do all three uh, the different states affect a microwave signal? So I've put a uh, little experiment together. We're going to try this in a uh, fishbowl um, filled with water first. And I've uh, put a little uh, 200 milliwatt transmitter inside a clear Christmas bauble here and I've made it uh, watertight so we can see that it does actually contain a uh, microwave transmitter. Hooked it up to a battery and a simple on off switch. And uh, we're just going to use a uh, cheap USB spectrum analyzer. And we're just going to use this. It's not going to tell us exactly how much of the signal the water is attenuating, but this is really good to give a color indication. If it's bright red, we're getting a uh, really strong signal. When it goes to amber and below, we're getting a pretty weak signal. And I'm going to have uh, these two pretty close together. We're looking at uh, around eight centimeters distance because I'm only using a small fish bowl so it should be interesting to see the three different states of water and how they uh, the three different states will affect a microwave signal. So we've got the transmitter turned on and we've got a really thick red line in the center of the spectrum there and two side lobes that are also really really red indicating a really strong signal because it's only about eight centimeters away or maybe ten centimeters away from the antenna on the spectrum analyzer so let's pop it in the water and let's see what uh, probably uh, six to eight centimeters of water can do to that microwave signal. So as soon as I put it in the water, you can clearly see there the two side lobes, the really red side lobes have now disappeared and we've got a thin red line running through the middle of the uh, spectrum. So that just shows how much water can seriously attenuate a microwave signal and this works in the exactly the same way when it comes to rain it will seriously uh, you know cripple a uh, long distance microwave signal because the uh, water just attenuates the signal so I've got the transmitter on and the uh, spectrum analyzer is recording I've already put a little bit of snow in the bottom there so let's see what happens when I start filling this up with this uh, bag of snow that I've got here So I'll try and pack it down a little bit to get rid of as many air gaps as I can. And as you can see on the spectrum analyzer, the snow has done really nothing to attenuate that microwave signal. Clearly nowhere near as powerful or uh, as good at attenuating the microwave signal as liquid water is so certainly snow is not going to uh, attenuate a microwave signal which is why microwave signals work really well in a snowstorm but not in a rainstorm. So this one's probably going to be the trickiest of uh, all three of the experiments basically I've swapped out the uh, plastic fish bowl for this glass one and I'm going to start pumping steam into here and hopefully we'll see uh, some reaction on the spectrum analyzer. I'm not sure how this is going to go. I've already tried it once, but I had to stop because um, for some reason I uh, lost contact with the battery. I think a little bit too much moisture got in between the contacts of the battery and uh, it stopped working. So let's try this for a second time then. Pop the lid on. And now I'll start pumping steam into there.
So I had that going for a couple of minutes and it doesn't really seem to have uh, had any effect on that microwave signal. So let's go over to the bench now and uh, we'll talk about a couple of things about all three experiments, why I think they turned out the way they did and what's actually going on with the microwave signal with the water. So why did the water in the form of a liquid attenuate that microwave signal so well but when it was in a solid and also in a, uh, a gaseous state, a vapour state if you like, it didn't do uh, quite as good of a job at attenuating that microwave signal. Now to understand that we have to look at the uh, water molecule itself and as uh, everybody knows it's one of the first uh, things you learn is water is made up with one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Now although water molecules do not have an overall charge the atoms that make them up do so the oxygen atom has a uh, negative charge and the two hydrogen atoms have a very small positive charge. Now when you take a look at the uh, microwave itself basically what it's doing is uh, oscillating up and down changing positive to negative along the wave there. Now at 2.4 gigahertz it's actually doing that 2.4 billion times a second so it's extremely fast and that effect of oscillating up and down has a uh, effect on uh, pulling and pushing the uh, water molecule it's basically when it's positive the positive wants to line up uh, with the uh, positive wave on the microwave there so the, the uh, hydrogen atoms force the water molecule in that direction but then when the uh, wave goes low into the negative again it then attracts the uh, oxygen molecule which makes it go in the opposite direction and it's doing this oscillation at uh, 2.4 uh, billion times a second that builds up friction which in itself builds up heat and uh, that energy is transferred into heat and that will warm up the water and uh, to create that energy in the water takes a lot of energy away from the microwave itself and that's why it does a good job of attenuating a microwave signal because it's basically sucking all that energy up so there's nothing left on the other side of the fishbowl or very little left. Now why isn't it doing that when the water is uh, frozen in a solid state? It's basically because the uh, water molecule is uh, locked up in a crystalline structure by the uh, hydrogen atoms so they're all packed together quite tightly and they are locked up and they have very little movement to uh, oscillate with so it doesn't suck the energy out of the microwave uh, wave as such the microwaves will go straight through there because uh, the uh, hydrogen and the uh, oxygen molecules aren't sucking that energy away. Now they do have a little bit of an effect on the microwave and with the will very very small uh, you know oscillations and when they're frozen in a crystalline structure with the hydrogen atoms but uh, if you keep the beam on there long enough those uh, little oscillations the uh, up and down movements will start to get bigger and bigger but it just takes a lot more energy to make them move just to get them moving to generate that energy and turn that energy into heat which is why if you put an ice cube in a uh, microwave it will take significantly longer to defrost that microwave and then bring it up to a boiling point than it would if you just put a glass of water in there it takes a significant amount of energy to unlock the uh, frozen water and then change its state into the liquid water and because of that ice has very little effect on a microwave signal. Now why didn't the uh, steam have uh, an effect either of attenuation or having uh, you know very little effect because it did seem to have very little effect on the uh, experiment that we just did. Now this is the water that I collected from the bottle of, bottom of the uh, fishbowl when we finished the experiment. Now as you can see there is uh, very little water here. Now you know this is probably an eighth 
of the amount of water I pumped in there we lost quite a bit through the steam going through the uh, the second hole to uh, in order so the uh, pressure didn't build up but uh, even so there's very very little water here and when you compare it to the amount of mass of the water that we had in the first test with the water in its liquid uh, form which was uh, about uh, two and a half litres of water it just didn't have enough mass to affect the microwave beam now the it was probably you know the uh, oxygen and uh, hydrogen molecules were oscillating but there were just not enough of them to suck up all the energy from the microwave beam so it didn't seem to have that much of an effect in the experiment that we just conducted and to probably see an effect with uh, using steam you probably need some highly sensitive equipment to pick that up because it's just such a small amount of water you're not going to get much of an effect on uh, attenuating a microwave beam so to sum up then ice has uh, very little effect when it comes to attenuating a microwave beam it just can't uh, suck that energy out of the beam water has a really good effect it uh, really does attenuate and kill a uh, microwave signal which is why when it's raining heavy you don't get as uh, good a signal out of your Wi-Fi um, you know if you've got a point-to-point -point setup as you would if it was uh, dry conditions and the steam we didn't really see an effect but we know the effect is still happening it's still interacting with the uh, water molecules in the steam but uh, there's just not enough mass of water there to affect our uh, microwave beam in the experiment we just did just doesn't have the mass of the uh, liquid water so we don't really see an effect so I've got a few more experiments lined up with uh, microwaves and one of the experiments that uh, I'm setting up at the moment is to see how uh, try and see if we can see evidence of microwaves interacting with uh, air around us so that should be a uh, interesting experiment a little bit unclear if it's going to work or not I've uh, asked my son who is the uh, physicist what he think will uh, actually happen now he thinks we'll see a small change and it will slightly affect uh, air the air molecules I'm not so sure I haven't tried it yet I'm still setting up the experiment itself but uh, I will be uploading it shortly so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please uh, give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one